Welcome to video one of the SnafuCon Bitrix 24 training series. This is Beta, your vice chair, and this is the first video on how we will be using Bitrix 24. Bitrix 24 is an organizational intranet. It has a lot of tools to keep us organized, on track, and collaborating efficiently. We seem to be having a problem where people in the same department don't know what each other are doing, or new people just don't know what to do. Too much of what needs to get done lives in people's heads and items get dropped. We had many people in 2016 new to certain departments who had no idea what was going on, and we had balls dropped in several departments as a result. That wasn't the only thing going on, but it was a contributing factor. Using this system, we have the ability to lay out an annual roadmap of tasks so that everyone involved at least has a chance to raise their hand and ask either, help me please, or do you need help? This system also allows us to collaborate on tasks and discuss those tasks right there in the task. We can even attach files and links which will keep all of the related resources in one place. Another big bonus for us is that the Bitrix drive has a lot more space that we can use, won't take up other people's Dropbox space, and we can split the files by workgroup, add permissions, and share them with other departments, or share them with all of the staff pretty easily. This should be an invaluable resource to those of you that have a lot of things you juggle during the year like I do. Bitrix is a large and powerful system, which of course means that it has a bit of a learning curve. Even so, it has a lot of intuitive features, and its less intuitive features are fairly easy once you get the hang of them. A few of these features include the best task management system I've personally used, a drive similar to Dropbox, although slightly less convenient, a customer relationship management system, a CRM, and a company calendar. I warn you, I'm not an expert on Bitrix. There are plenty of things I don't know about, but I've explored the system thoroughly, and I've pestered customer service to figure a lot of it out. This video series is a guide to share with you what I've found out and to get you started. Additionally, Bitrix is a system that's being worked on and updated regularly, so in six months these videos may be old or wrong, but I hope that they'll still give everyone a thorough overview of the system and how we intend on using it. I'm sure any changes will end up in the wiki. Eventually. So I want to tell you right now that the phone app is only a crutch to be able to use Bitrix while you're away from your PC. It's not very intuitive, it's not terribly easy to maneuver, and while it seems like it's missing features, it does seem to have most of what you really need when you really need it. I do recommend you put it on your phone, however, because it gives push notifications, which can be rather useful, and it also gives you a quick way of entering tasks when you're on the go. Additionally, their desktop version, which is significantly less intuitive than the web version, is effectively a limited browser. It is filled with links that do nothing more than open in your default browser. It does have a few conveniences, but it also has a lot of limitations and a few things that are kind of frustrating. However, I still recommend that you install and run it, because we're moving away from Dropbox and using Bitrix to store our staff files. The desktop client allows limited Dropbox-like access to your files. I do want to tell you at the time of this video, moving and deleting files is really buggy, so I don't recommend attempting it from the desktop version. However, file creation and update is really good, and they're updating the software regularly, so hopefully the bugs will get worked out soon. Overall, you will primarily want to use the Bitrix 24 app through your browser. These videos will be showing you around the web version, although I do intend on covering the phone app and desktop client as well at some point. The most important part of Bitrix for us is its task management system. Of the things that make this system valuable for us is the ability to set up annually recurring tasks, effectively creating a roadmap of all the things we need to do each year. These tasks can be categorized by work group and, most importantly, can be linked to many people within the organization. So you'll normally be logging on to bitrix24.net, or you'll go directly to snafucon.bitrix24.com, and you'll have a login form similar to this one. When you log in, you may end up on a confusing page that looks like this. This is your Bitrix24 Network Master Account page. You're going to want to click up here in the right corner to access the SnafuCon intranet. Notice that I have more than one intranet here. You'll probably only have one, but if you have multiple intranets that you need to access like I do, this is a useful page to land on. However, if you go directly to snafucon.bitrix24.com or click on single sign-on, you should be able to bypass this page. If you ever want to get back to that page, you can click on your icon in the upper right and click on My Bitrix 24 Network page. So before I go too far into the specifics of Bitrix, I want to point you to one of the best features right here in the upper right hand corner. This is the Help button. When you log in, occasionally there will be a bean that pops up and points at it to remind you it's there. Their documentation is actually pretty okay, so I recommend taking a little time to familiarize yourself with it. The documents aren't perfect and don't cover all of the minutiae, but they are still a great resource to start with when you have a question. 
The menu on the left side shows some major things you can access. It's useful to note that down at the bottom you can click Configure Menu, Configure Menu Items, and update the order of things, change the names of certain things, hide items, unhide items, etc. Customize this for what works best for you. Something really cool about this menu is that you can bookmark most places around the site. If you click this star, it flings itself over to the menu, then you can move it or rename it, or remove it. It's really useful if you frequent specific workgroups or pages. I do recommend bookmarking your departmental workgroup. If you're working and you need more space, you can even collapse the menu by clicking on the dividing line next to the menu. You click here to go to your task page. It's really easy to create new tasks. You just click New Task and enter your task information. At the bottom, you can click Add Task or Add Task and create another one. I will regularly enter a bunch of tasks this way and then come back and organize them later. The important part is getting them into the system before they're forgotten. Over here we have our work groups. They're mostly set up by department, but some departments may be grouped together if they're similar enough. You start out in your groups, so you may have one or none here, but you can go to all groups and see all the groups you have access to. Work groups can be completely private and invite only, public within the organization, or public to the world. They're good not only for departmental organization, but for large projects. We're setting them up as we add staff, but I've also set up a couple of public projects, uh, mapping the venue and staff training. So if you're interested in those projects, you can join them. It is up to the department heads whether or not they want their work group to be public to the other staff or private to only their staff. If the work group is public, you can just join it. And if the work group is private, you can request to be added and then the department head will just have to approve you. So over here we have your drive. Your drive is automatically connected to the company drive and every work group you're a part of as long as they have a drive for them. Most work groups do. You have private files and shared folders. Any folder you create or file you add to your drive is private to you by default and anything you add to a shared folder is obviously shared by default. You can create folders, you can set specific permissions, such as sharing only specific people, work groups, or departments. However, before you start making folders to share with your department, please talk to the admin about the best setup, because with very few exceptions, you should really be using work group folders instead of making departmental folders. Also, please note, the admin are able to access your Bitrix drive and add, remove, move, or copy files if we need to. That isn't to say you should rely on that, but more that you should be cautious about what you put in your drive. Please do use Bitrix Drive as your con working folder. If you work on or generate new files for the con, whether they're procedures, spreadsheets, templates, or even just your meeting notes, please make sure you're saving them to your Bitrix folder. To make that easier, you will probably want to install the desktop version in spite of its bugginess. If you do download and install it, it will download all of your con files to your computer so you can work on them similarly to how we use Dropbox. It also allows you to turn specific folders on and off for download if you have limited space on your computer. So that should be a good overview for most of what you're going to need, but I do have one thing I want to show you which is really important, and that's how to edit your notifications. By default, Bitrix tends to notify you about every little change, so you probably want to know how to modify that so you can get notified about what you actually want. Click your name configure notifications. It's going to start out in simple mode, but you're going to want advanced mode. It's a stupidly small window, but it will allow you to choose what you want to be notified about and how. I recommend erring on the side of notifying you about everything until you have a handle on what Bitrix notifies you about and how useful those notifications are to you. You can always change it later. I also strongly recommend leaving site and application notifications on as much as possible and only turning off the email and push notifications and only after they've actually annoyed you. My notifications are pretty much set to the default that came with Bitrix with all of the site notifications turned on and some of the email stuff turned off. But I'm also logging on to Bitrix just about every day. If you turn off all of the notifications, you won't know what's going on, which really defeats the purpose of this system. So once you've updated your settings, if you do have emails going to you, I recommend setting up a filter in your email to put Pitrix notifications in a special folder that you check once a day or so, because they can take over your inbox if a lot of changes happen. Ask the SnafuCon admin if you need help with that. The very last thing I want to show you in this video is the intranet sitemap, which is this button in the left corner. It links you to a lot of places. If you're lost, pull out this map and see if you can find what you need there. So take some time, poke around, make some tasks, finish them, assign them to someone, delete them, upload a file to your drive, attach it to a task, explore the new system and find out what you can do. And remember, you can always contact the SnafuCon admin for assistance.